let's discuss uh, electron transport in two-dimensional um, electron gas in a 2D system. So we have a um, two-dimensional material with some carriers inside and the these charge carriers, the electron, the electrons or um, holes, they can propagate uh, through this material. And the question would be to figure out what would be the conductivity, the current and going through this the system and so on. So before before discussing this in details, let's uh, let's talk about the Druda model model. And um, for this, we will use a uh, we will work in the K space, in the momentum space. On the two-dimensional electron gas, using a free particle, free particle model, we have a parabolic dispersion relations, so energy, momentum, they are related as a parabolas. So this is our dispersion relation, E of K. And uh, they, this band, this electronic band is filled with electrons up to some level which uh, which is called the Fermi level. This is the Fermi level. And this means um, when when we don't have the electric field, so maybe I'll use a different um, different symbols for energy. Let me use epsilon K. Epsilon F for the Fermi level. In the absence of electric field, so when the electric field is zero, we have the same uh, number of carriers with the positive momentum, so they're propagating to the right, and the same number of carriers which propagate to the left. So the average, the average velocity of the particles will be zero. We can also view now from the top, so if, if I just continue this plot, and now I plot the view from the top, because this is a two dimensions, so we have um, a two vector component, two components of the momentum, so k1 and k2, or kx, ky, and uh, the electrons which are uh, mm -hmm. at the Fermi level, they will kind of form this, uh, this ring here, there will be a vector, this is a, this is a Fermi wave vector, and this is sometimes called a Fermi, Fermi surface. So of the uh, uh, allowed allowed values of momentum, and uh, so this average velocity, which is zero in the case of the absence of electric field, is called drift velocity. So now let's uh, see what will happen if we have electric field applied. Um, I will. Just use maybe a different color. So let's say we have uh, now we have electric field, which goes let's say it goes in this direction to the right. This will create the imbalance because of the electric field. So the the, the carriers now move, um, have a general a general tendency to move towards uh, the positive momentum. So you will have now more carriers. Not more positively moving carriers, and you will have less uh, carriers which move to the negative direction, to the left. And there will be oh, kind of like the effect of electric field, it kind of tilts tilts this um, this parabola. Or from the top, you can view this one as this um, as this circle uh, displaced by some delta k. So the new center is somewhere here. So you can say. This new delta k and this displaced uh, displaced center, and uh, on the atomic scale, this um, this picture can be viewed like that. So you have lots of uh, centers inside the crystal where the electron scatters. So those like maybe impurities, maybe this is um, um, the atom dislocations or of the thermal vibrations, or maybe the interacting with other electrons. So we don't. We don't discuss the nature of these uh, of these um, states of the scattering centers, but in principle, so what will happen? The electron will have um, several collisions in the and get scattered in the random directions, 
and on average after several scattering centers it will probably remain in the sa around the same position it would not drift in some direction or in principle when you average when you average all these kind of scattering trajectories for all the electrons they will all adapt to zero uh, total total displacement but when you have electric field on average there will be um, more preferential sc scattering towards one of the one of the directions along the electric field because now you have the force for the electrons to to accelerate in in that direction so it will be more moving um, some direction there will be some directional motion there let's now uh, discuss this in a more formal way so when we have electric field applied to a particle we have electric field and there's a particle here so this electric field creates a force which acts on the particle which is e times electric field and you can also write this in terms of the momentum change so this uh, the derivative of the momentum I just uh, wrote in terms of wave vector it's, uh, but that's a momentum anyway and uh, the Drudo model assumption is very it's very straightforward so it assumes that we use a Newton's equation of motion for the particle which has some mass m and the charge of q like minus e for the it's a, it depends on the, on the on the, on the definition of the sign so now if you have electric field then the the equation the second the newton second law will be um, mr double dot so it's this acceleration equals uh, q e but there's a problem with this equation because there's no resistance and so the electron will accelerate indefinitely so to correct this there was the by drew the, was the introduction of a, a friction term to describe the electrical resistance and the assumption uh, used by drew was that um, the frictional force is proportional to the particle velocity and it's in the direction opposite to the velocity so we have this now the second equation where we have uh, so we can augment we can augment this equation which is now minus this m over tau this r dot it's the particle velocity and this is the time between between collisions and between two successive collisions just to give an example in the in the copper at low temperature the tau will be on the order of nanoseconds um, so that's basically the that's basically the drew the, the drew the model and we can rewrite it in terms of velocity which we are more interested in the in the velocities of particles than the coordinates so you will have m mv dot equals q e minus m over tau v if the electric field is constant we will have a steady state condition and the derivative of the velocity so the acceleration is zero and then you can write the equation of this uh, of the steady state velocity in these conditions that v steady state will be q tau over m e tau so this uh, this is a drift velocity And it's linearly proportional to the electric field and you have this coefficient of proportionality in the Drudo model which has the elect electrical charge the scattering time and the mass and this is so this is a constant at the normal conditions and it's called electron mobility okay. 
it's sometimes labeled mu. So the the electron mobility is the coefficient of proportionality between the drift velocity and the electric field or the air magnitudes and the drift velocity and it's e tau over m so how do we use this um, to calculate the the current for example you will use the following approach so we just take by definition the current density is um, the concentration of carriers times the charge the the charge per carrier so the elementary charge times this uh, drift velocity so the average velocity it's basically a definition of current density so how many particles in terms of density so how many particles per, per unit area um, um, are passing through uh, this carrier um, at this uh, velocity v so we can then write it and yeah, we can replace this v symbol with the drift velocity and q we can use an e and evd we can write down this also in terms of um, uh, electric field and uh, mm. electric field and the the scattering time and the mass so there will be the carrier density times the charge squared times the scattering time divided by the mass uh, times the electric field or you can say this is a conductivity times the electric field so this will be the conductivity in terms of through the model conductivity. and uh, to calculate the carrier density we would actually use the density of states we, de we, we derived previously so to calculate the carrier density you would take the integral up to the Fermi level of the density of states and then you need to take into account the, the Dirac, Fermi Dirac distribution and that would give you um, now the carrier density so again the density of states we are getting from the from dispersion relation And if we want to actually compute this for realistic materials, then we have to use a band theory. Instead of uh, using a free particle model, we would need to use the band theory beyond the free particle picture. And that would also actually affect this, uh, this mass here. So this mass becomes now the effective mass. It's labeled M star. And we will discuss the concept of effective mass in the next, in the next video.